down in research already put together. The research that is going to be done is already specified. You don't have any choice about it. It tells you what you're going to do. And they're done up at the level of, you know, the advice comes from the level of the National Academy of Sciences and National Science Foundation and so forth. But the advice comes from the very community that's trained and you want. In the classical electrodynamics, uh, which basically the definitive paper was written in 1865 during the time of the Civil War. It was modified, it actually was curtailed to a lesser models two times later, one by Heaviside in the 1880s just after uh, Maxwell was dead, and then further his version of the equation, which is what is taught today as Maxwell's equations, were then further symmetrized by symmetrical regaging by Lorentz in the 1880s, and that's what added to symmetry and threw out all the systems out of symmetry. It was an arbitrary decision made by Lorentz in the 1860s because it made the equations easier. You see, otherwise the equations are so nonlinear, the variables are not separated, you've got to use numerical methods. You can't separate the variables and solve the equations in most cases. So it was horrible when you didn't have computers. Today it's not that big a problem. It's a problem for an old guy like me, but for, small, for younger guys who go to a good university and get uh, numerical methods and mathematical and so forth on computers, give them a good computer, give them a good program, and okay, numerical methods is no problem. He can number crunch. The computer will do it. He doesn't have to sit there and painfully to do it like they had to do it back in the 1880s. So they did it for a reason, but they threw out the baby with the bathwater. They threw out exactly a whole class of Maxwellian systems permitted by nature that are not in equilibrium with their external environment. The external environment being precisely the other two components of the super system, the active local vacuum and uh, the curved space-time. See, we didn't have, the electron hadn't even been discovered then. The atom hadn't been discovered. None of this non-abelian stuff, except maybe as an idle curiosity, none of that was even born yet. We didn't have the models. What we had was a problem of trying to understand anything at all about electromagnetics and trying to communicate, as Heaviside pointed out, with what were then called electricians, not electrical engineers, and they were about the education of an electrician today. And uh, he said, you'll never get quaternions across to them that uh, Maxwell wrote his stuff in. You've got to get it simpler. So he chopped it with a broad axe. And then when uh, Lorentz came in and further symmetry, he chopped it again. And it only contained those systems assumed to be in equilibrium or very near equilibrium with their external environment. So we have built a whole class of systems and, um, and procedures and models throughout the physics and throughout chemistry and all these other things depending on electromagnetics based on equilibrium conditions. And as long as that system restores its equilibrium very rapidly, then the present physics model is quite sufficient. And the present uh, U1 electrodynamics model is quite sufficient. And the present chemistry model is quite sufficient. When it doesn't recover symmetry almost immediately, very quickly, so that there's not much effects at all from uh, disequilibrium, if it minimizes all its disequilibrium effects, the other models are adequate. If it does not minimize disequilibrium effect, particularly if it stabilizes the disequilibrium structures and the dynamics, then the other models fall apart. They are incapable of describing that kind of condition. So we've got to go to the models that can handle it, and that's the higher symmetry electromagnetics, which haven't been factored into chemistry very much yet either. So we're, in, we're caught in a situation where we're using a hundred and something year old stuff, and it's been modified and curtailed. There have been one hell of a lot of physics discovered since then. There have been a lot of things discovered in electrodynamics since then so that we could model some of this higher uh, physical phenomena, and it hasn't been added into the standard uh, electrodynamics model, and it hasn't been added into chemistry. That's your problem.